89 lawmakers, including State Senator Joe Comerford and Representative Natalie Blay, sent a letter to Beacon Hill after the Healthy Incentives Program was suspended for the season. The program offers a rebate to those using food stamps to buy produce at local farms. The program is typically suspended for a few months each year after the money budgeted by the state is exhausted. Lay and Comerford joined me to discuss their concerns with this year's suspension. For me, HIP is a triple win for the Western Massachusetts community, so for the Hampshire Franklin Worcester District. It provides nutritious food to people who need it, people who are food insecure. It supports our farmers, giving them a little bit of a market, a little bit of a margin, a financial margin, and it helps our local economies. Because when people go to use their food stamps and then HIP dollars on top of it, they purchase other things, right? So a uh, winter farmer's market will see that much more uh, in sales as a result of the state incentivizing the use of food stamps uh, for, or SNAP, benefits for healthy produce. Mm. Representative Blay, how about for you? Why did you want to sign on to this letter and, and send this message to the governor and the lieutenant governor? Well, I felt it was really important to send this message to them specifically because there seem, they seem to think that this is a farm subsidy. As, as Senator Comerford just said, this is this is much more than just helping our farmers. It is supporting the local economy. It is uh, increasing the health and well-being of our neighbors. And we know that for every dollar that is uh, spent on the program, it returns an additional dollar and twelve cents into our local economy. We know that we're seeing one point nine million dollars in annual savings in health care costs. So this is not just a farm subsidy, it's an investment in our future. And so to your point about the health benefits, do you think this program's about three, year old, three years old, it launched in 2017, mm -hmm. in tandem for those who aren't uh, familiar with it, with the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, SNAP is much easier to say, uh, that you mentioned. So do you attribute those health benefits to the fact that people have this additional access to these fresh healthy foods. Absolutely. We know that that access is critically important in improving health outcomes. And for that reason alone, we need to make sure that this program is predictable, that it's consistent, because we know that hunger is not seasonal. We know that it is year round. And so the Massachusetts Food Systems Collaborative, the Food System Caucus, has been working really hard to build um, confidence in this program. And suspensions like this one shake that confidence to its very core. Every year that the program has been out since 2017, there has been this suspension. It typically comes in April. When I looked back on the DTA, the Department of Transitional Assistance website, that, sus that sort of suspension happens in April. Why is it happening earlier this year? Do we know? Well, I mean, in a sense, the program's a victim of its own success, meaning more and more people want to engage with HIP, more farmers want to participate, seeing the benefits to themselves, their farms, their community, right? The farmers participating in HIP right now are, are very community-minded. Uh, and more and more, as more and more people who need uh, nutritious food uh, come aware, become aware of HIP, they want to participate as well. Um, I just wanted to actually go back to something that Rep. Lay said that sure. I think is extraordinarily important, which is we had a public health hearing up in Greenfield. We called it Food is Public Health. And, you know, panel after panel offered pretty intense testimony about the role of nutritious food in making them well, making people well, keeping them well. So we, there's enough science out there for the administration to understand the public health benefits to making sure that the food folks who are food insecure get to eat is nutritious, is mm. fresh. Uh, and we can do that through HIP like no other program we have currently in the Commonwealth. And if you look at the map of Western Massachusetts for this particular program, we see that Hampshire County, excuse me, that Franklin County uses it the most. 32% uh, of the residents there report to DTA or DTA has that uh, statistic use the program. And then if you kind of go down the map, it's used a little less by people in Hampshire County, a little less in Hamden, and a little less in Berkshire County. But certainly all four counties in Western Massachusetts residents are using this program. And to your point, Senator, about it being a victim of its own success, a DTA says it grew 20% year over year, the people who are using this program. Is it going to be sustainable then in terms of the fact that 
the money is set aside in the budget. Once that money runs out, the program is suspended. If it keeps, if people keep using it, is it even going to be a successful program? So you're asking the right question. This is the question that the legislature has been asking the administration now for some time, wanting to engage with data, wanting to engage with a strategy, wanting to engage through an equity lens, right? Like, let's make sure that the folks who need HIP the most get HIP the most. Um, so we've wanted to have these planning sessions. What we don't want are start, stop, start, stop with, with very little to no notice, right? It's not good for the farmers. It's not good for those who need to rely on this benefit. It's not good for the vendors, the, the public service programs, you know, social service programs that are helping people access HIP. Everybody loses when we, as a legislature and administration, refuse to plan uh, and then ebb and flow. Uh, in ways that are, I think, not um, respectful of the cohorts involved in HIP. And so what are your thoughts on how the program might need to shift or change? Is it more money being allocated in the budget? Is what? How would you suggest you alleviate the problem? Well, I think that there needs to be a stakeholder involvement process. I mean, that when the HIP program first started, it was born of this collaborative effort of, of a group of people. And right now, it just feels like that stakeholder input process has been put on hold and that the administration is making decisions that might not be best for the Commonwealth as a whole. Uh, the letter that was sent was signed by 89 different legislators from across the Commonwealth. So it's not only Western Massachusetts, it has broad support. And I would like to think that we can work collaboratively to identify the solutions to keep this going. Have you had any response from the governor or the lieutenant governor at this point to the letter? Um, well, we've had a response from the commissioner of DTA, Department of Transitional mm -hmm. Assistance, uh, who has said um, that she is willing to kindle a kind of collaboration that we haven't seen before. And, and to your question, will this take more money? Yeah, probably. Uh, again, we don't have the ability yet because we haven't seen the data as granularly as we want to or need to, um, to be able to say, ah, so what's the sweet spot for HIP? And how do we get it equitably in all parts of the Commonwealth? Here in Western Massachusetts, we were early adopters. So we are benefiting disproportionately from HIP in some respects. Um, but you know, every year the legislature has put in more money than we've been able uh, to secure. Uh, and every year people have put in supplemental budget requests to make sure that we don't um, fa face these operational pauses. Um, and, you know, in fact, it's the most coveted right now line item in the budget. More people in the legislature, in the House and the Senate sign on to this amendment uh, than any other amendment in the budget process. It's because we see the value of HIP, our folks see the value of HIP, and so we want to go the distance. And it will take more than the five million dollars that the governor put in the FY21 yes. budget. We know that that is not enough. So I think the legislature certainly stands ready to fight for those additional dollars. Absolutely. That, they, there's a lot of assumptions in that five million, right? It's a smaller program, maybe seasonal, maybe getting to fewer places. So already there's a, a lot we have to push back on, even as we push back on what's called this operational pause. Hmm. In terms of where you think this will go next, what are your hopes? Do you have an idea? Well, <laughs> I mean, you know, we're, we're not finished advocating for this. Uh, those of us who signed that letter um, are linking arms to continue to push back on the misguided nature of this very... Um, uh, what am I looking for? Very precipitous, very uh, no notice, if you will, pause on this vital public program. So we're, we're not going down easily, um, even if the administration has decided to say, state publicly that HIP uh, will be suspended. We're doing everything we can to push that off. And then as Rep. Lay said rightly, frankly, the next fight will be in the budget um, for the coming fiscal year. Which is a fight we're familiar with. We came in as new legislators yeah. to exactly the same challenge, as you noted before. So I think you know, I'm interested in opening up that dialogue and making sure that we are having these conversations with the administration, but that we're also bringing people in. We need the stakeholders. We need the farmers. We need everybody talking about the importance of this program and what makes the most sense moving forward.